glad you're here. We're glad to be together. Another week, another Sunday, another chance to praise the Lord. Amen. We've come to worship you, Jesus.
Oh, that amazing grace, such a sweet, sweet thing, the greatest gift that we could ever receive. And this, this month, as we have been reciting and trying to memorize John 1.14, which we'll read in a moment, I'm just reminded that the reason why this verse is so exciting is because this is how that wonderful grace of God was extended to you and I. Let's read that verse together. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. And so this last season that we've just come through, celebrating Christmas, celebrating the coming of our Lord Jesus, he, he was called Emmanuel, God with us, right? And that is one of my favorite names of God. He, our God is not distant. He does not sleep or slumber. He is not only awake, but he is right by our side. He is within us, those of us who have accepted Jesus, we, those of us who have accepted this free gift of God, right? So what I love is even though Jesus stepped out of glory, the glory of heaven, he who is God, remaining holy, came to earth, dwelt among us, lived the perfect life that I was supposed to live. He died the death that I deserved. And then he broke death. He came up from the grave. And that is why we sing, my chains are gone. Because if death is broken, if sin is broken, if hell is broken, then what other chains do we have? Amen? And so when Jesus resurrected and he ascended to the right hand of the Father, he rejoined the Father in heaven at his right hand, at his eternal throne, and has maintained his holiness that entire time. Was tempted just like I have been tempted just like you have been tempted, but he never once stumbled because he is God and our God is a holy, holy, holy God. Amen. And so before we sing this next song, I just want to thank our Lord for who he is and for this wonderful grace that he's extended us. Pray with me. Oh, Father, we thank you so much for who you are. And we could end the prayer right there. But Lord, not only did you just exist 
as this glorious, holy, holy, holy being, you decided to create us. And not only did you create us, but you, you made us in a relationship with you. And Lord, we have broken that relationship by sinning and by falling short of your glorious standard, but you still again gave us grace. You gave us Jesus, you gave us your son, who even though he was man, he remained God, fully God, fully man, holy the whole time that he was here on earth. Jesus, you knew that I could not live the life that I, I was called to live, that was perfect, and you lived it for me, Jesus, and you died the death that I deserved. And then you did what I could never have done and you resurrected. You came up from that grave. You live again now and forever. And because of that, you have extended that eternal life to everyone. And so anyone who believes, anyone who calls upon your name will be saved. So Jesus says, you are in heaven right now. You are on your throne. The angels singing, holy, holy, holy the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Lord, we also sing that to you right now. We love you, God. Let your will be done today in Christ's name. Amen.
Well, good morning. Take your Bibles, find John chapter 6, if you would. John chapter 6. What a marvelous time of praise and worship. Thank you, team, for that. And uh, I was just uh, sitting over there, just kind of, I guess, uh, just praying, listening to uh, the team lead us and singing praise and worship to him. And I have to tell you, um, just the thought, the thought hit me that it's, uh, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really an amazing thought that I get to come now and teach you God's word because the reality is when I sit there and I was just listening to you all singing about the holiness of God and how, and how the Lord is on his throne and how it, it really just hit me that, that truthfully, you know, as, as human beings, how on earth do we presume that we can even get up and stand and, and speak after a song like that? And, um, and, I, and I hope and trust it was the Lord because I know I have a job to do now. I'm supposed to teach you God's word. I can't just, I just can't let you just sit here for the next 30 minutes and think about it. In fact, about how great he is, even though that might do us all some good. But, but this is what the impression I got was, it was simply this, son, get up there and just simply point them to me now. And praise the Lord, that's exactly what the scriptures are all about. In, fa- in fact, this, this month and these next few weeks, as we look at these I am statements of the Lord Jesus, let me just point you to Jesus in his own words. He, today we're gonna hear him tell us, I am the bread of life. That's in John chapter six. In John chapter eight, he tells us in his own words, I am the light of the world. In John chapter 10, in his own words, he tells us, I am the door of the sheep. Also in John chapter 10, in his own words, he says, I am the good shepherd. He then in John chapter 11, he tells us, I am the resurrection and the life. Those are his own words. He says in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And and he's gonna tell us in John 15, he's gonna look at us and he's gonna tell us, listen, you don't have to do this in your own strength. You don't have to just gut out the Christian life. You can't do it on your own. And he says, that's why I want you to know, I am the true vine. So I want to pray for us right now and ask God to bless the reading and the teaching and our hearing of his word. So let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that just as Brother Chad was reminding us, you did indeed come in the flesh. You stepped off that throne. You even even were, were willing, Lord, to take on our humanity and our flesh. And Lord, indeed, you have defeated death and sin. And and as we hear this good news today about how you are the bread of life, I pray that today you will indeed encourage our souls. Everyone in this room, anyone watching on television or online, anyone who's going through something, I pray that they would know that ultimately, Lord Jesus, you are the one who brings satisfaction into our lives. All other things, all other idols, all other false gods fall flat. Oh, Lord Jesus, bless your word today as we dig into it. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Oh, Lord God, you are my rock and redeemer. In Christ's name we pray, amen, amen. Well, we're gonna be getting into John chapter six, but I tell you, as we talk about today, satisfaction, I brought a little something with me. I, I, I don't know about you, but I don't know if you can see what this is. This is a Krispy Kreme box. Anybody, does anybody enjoy a good hot now donut? Can I get a witness? Amen. Now, some, now, now well, I guess we could cause almost probably possibly a church split. We could say, now, how many of you are Dunkin' Donut people? That's your kind of donut. All right. I see some of you. A little bit later, we're going to have an altar call and you can repent. You can come forward. And uh, now, my wife, she's, she's a Dunkin' Donut person. That's where she is. I was kind of raised on Krispy Kreme. And I tell you, it's amazing. You'll sit there and you'll smell all that goodness. Amen, amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. And, 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 then, and, then, you, and then you'll get there and you'll, you'll pick it up out the box and you put it in your mouth. Oh, and it's just, it's almost, if it's hot now, it's almost like it just melts in your mouth, doesn't it? And for that moment, oh my goodness, it seems like there's some satisfaction, amen? But like so many things in this world, no sooner do you put it in your mouth, no sooner do you taste it, and boom, it's gone just like that. Loved ones today, I, all kidding aside, I want us to see how Jesus Christ 
truly is not just this passing bread. Oh, he's not just a sweet donut. I want you to know, listen, listen. He's not just empty calories. He is the one, he is the bread of life. He is the one who sustains. He is the one who satisfies. He's the one who offered himself unto us. So look with me in your Bibles at John chapter six. Look down at verse 22. Here in verse 22, I want you to see this. Jesus, now he picks up here. This is after the feeding of the 5,000. This is after he's walked on water. And it says in verse 22, on the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and they went to Capernaum and the Bible says seeking Jesus. They were seeking Jesus. Verse 25, when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, and catch this. He says, I say to you this, you are seeking me not because you saw the signs, not because you saw me feed thousands upon thousands upon thousands, not because I walked on water. You're seeking me because you ate your fill of the loaves. It's the next morning, right? What time is it? It's breakfast time. That's what time it is. They ate their fill the day before. They want Jesus to give them some breakfast. That's what this is all about. And he says this in verse 27. The Bible says, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Verse 29, Jesus answered them, this is the work of God. Here it is, folks, that you believe in him whom was Uh, whom he has sent. Remember last week, I walked you through a lot of those verses in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, that say believe, 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 believe. And if you're reading through the Gospel of John in the month of January, like I put out there to you last Sunday, you just highlight and circle those words believe. And then, and then they, and then, and then look at this, look at this, verse, verse, verse 30. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? My goodness, just think about what he'd done the day before. What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna of the wilderness as it is written. He gave them the bread uh, from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you, here it is, the true bread. Everybody say true bread. The true bread. Not something that you eat for a moment and then you're hungry again the next day. Not something that, oh, it may seem to satisfy for a moment or it may just kind of just kind of touch your taste buds and then all of a sudden it evaporates and it's gone. He says, I'm the true bread from heaven for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. And then look at what Jesus says. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Oh, loved ones, just take that in. Take that in for a moment today. He is the one who ultimately offers and sustains our spiritual life in the Lord. Oh, as bread satisfies our physical hunger, Jesus is the one who offers and satisfies our spiritual hunger. So here's the big idea. Here's what I want you to take away today. Jesus is the bread of life that can satisfy the hunger of my soul. Jesus is the bread of life that can satisfy the hunger of my soul. So how can we have this satisfied soul? Well, he's having this conversation with these people here in John chapter six. And there are three aspects that I wanna point out to you today of Jesus truly satisfying the hunger of my soul. Here's number one. Number one, Jesus truly satisfies the hunger of my soul as only he can, as only he can. Just go back in John chapter six. I wanna give you some context here. Go back to verse one. The Bible says, after this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, 
which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs uh, that he was doing on the sick. They saw the miracles he was doing. Verse three, Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus says to Philip, Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get just a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, hey, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, well, have the people sit down. Now, there was much grass in this place, and I think that's a little note there in the scriptures, just to let you and me know, hey, listen, folks, unless you think there weren't a lot of people, the Bible wants us to know there was enough grass, there was a whole hillside, there was plenty of room for these 5,000 plus men, women, and children, uh, men, uh, women and children, along with these 5,000 men to eat. So that was a lot of people. That was a lot of people. And so, and so catch this. Jesus, Jesus then took the loaves and we'd given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. Now just by the way, parenthetically here, I just always think about that little boy. That little boy who evidently was the only one who had enough sense to bring some lunch that day. Can you just picture his face when they came over and they took that little fella's uh, 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 happy meal away from him? I must, he must have been like, what gives y'all? I mean, come on, but just, but boy, he was gonna see something. God was gonna take that little boy's lunch and he was gonna work a miracle that I'm sure that little boy never, ever forgot. It's amazing what God can do. He can take a little bit you've got he can take you, he can take me, and he can work miracles. It's amazing what God can do when we'll just yield ourselves in. That's a whole nother sermon for another day right there of just giving God what we've got and seeing Jesus do so much more with it. But just look at this here. Look at what is happening. He, he, he passes out the food and they eat their fill. They eat till they don't want anything else. And verse 12 says, and when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, filled 12 baskets with fragments. I think that was so every disciple had to carry all those leftovers himself. Each disciple got a basket full of leftovers. And I, and I think Jesus is trying to make the point, don't you ever, ever forget that I'm enough. Don't you ever forget that I satisfied these people's their physical hunger, and I'm the one who can satisfy their spiritual, eternal hunger. He gathered up, they gathered up, they had, they had 12 baskets with all of the leftovers, that's amazing. And when the people saw the sign that he'd done, verse 14 says, this is indeed, they said, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. And perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, because who doesn't want a king who gives out free food, amen, amen. Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Now just pause there for a moment. And I know I read a lot of the Bible and I hope you're reading along with me because it's a lot easier to read along with me than just to listen to me read it to you, okay? So bring your Bibles to church. If you're watching on TV or online, get your Bible out with us. I'm glad you're having Bible study with us. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're taking in the sermon and hearing God's word, but get this point. Jesus is the one who was satisfying them. Jesus satisfied their physical hunger. I mean, they were hungry. Have you ever felt hungry? The more I talk about food right now, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you might start to get a little hungry, right? As we begin to approach lunchtime, oh, maybe you're beginning to, beginning to get a little bit hungry. You know, God created our bodies to run on food. Hunger is the early warning system that we're getting low on fuel, that we're, that we're getting low on food, that we need something to eat. We feel hunger, we hear the growling of our stomach. It causes us to think, hey, you know what? I think it's about time to eat. Well, you know what? The Lord created us also with the need for spiritual, for spiritual food. He created us with a spiritual hunger. We have the growling of our soul and we need to know where we can find the satisfaction for our, for our soul. In Matthew 5, verse six, Jesus said, 
he talked about soul hunger. He said this, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Jesus wanted the people who had followed him to Capernaum to realize he's offering them much more folks than just a free lunch. He was offering them himself. He offers himself to satisfy our deepest spiritual need. Now, I don't know if you know about this, but if I've ever told you all or not, but my first job, my first real tax paying job was when I turned 16 and I worked for McDonald's in Yorktown, Virginia. And I mean, I would get there early on Saturdays. I get there like 4.30 on Saturday mornings and I would make the biscuits. I would get the breakfast ready and folks would begin to come in when we opened up at 5.30. Then afternoons after school, I would make the Big Macs. I'd make the Happy Meals. I'd make the fish sandwiches. I want you, that was my job. My job was helping to satisfy people's physical hunger. And I think about some of the boys and girls in the room right now, they must be thinking, man, Brother Brian, you had the dream job. You had free access to all the Happy Meals you could eat and you gave that up for this, to, pre to be a preacher. I know, I know, but now I'm, in the, but now I'm in the soul food business, amen? That's what I'm doing right now, I'm in the soul food business. But my, that was my first real job. And it was amazing, people, people, the sign says billions and billions of people served. It's because there's a lot of hungry people out there. And loved ones, I want you to know, listen, there's a lot of spiritually hungry people out there. You may even be here today and, and, and you're hungry in your spirit. Well, I want you to know, listen, Jesus truly satisfies the hunger of my soul as only he can. That's the reason, that's the reason he did that miracle. He did that sign is he wanted them to get the message. He wanted them to know that, listen, you, you have a hunger for God and I'm the only one who can satisfy that need in your life. And that's why over in verse 22, what I read to you earlier on the next day, they, they begin looking for him again. And, and they're looking because, because they're hungry again. And, and then he goes on in, in verse 25 and following that I read to you, he begins to explain to them how he is the one who can satisfy their deepest need. Look with me at verse 33 again. In, verse, in chapter six, verse 33, Jesus said, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to this world, to the world. I, I, I want you just to hear that verse again. Just listen to it. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life, life. There's two Greek words for life. One is bios, which biology, that's physical life. The other is zoas, that's quality of life. This word life in the Greek New Testament is that word zoas, quality of life. You see, you see Jesus is talking not just about, about you breathing and walking, He's talking about your quality of life. And, and then there's this comparison between manna and Jesus Christ there. Back up in like 31 and verse 32, truly, truly, I say to you, it, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. Just think about that Old Testament example. Back in the Old Testament, in Exodus, when they, when they received manna, that manna would come from God and it came every day. And, and, and every day they had to take what they could eat and what would satisfy their hunger. But notice, they couldn't save it up. You know, wouldn't that be just like us? I'm gonna store up as much manna as I can so I can have enough for the rest of the month. I think there was a lesson and the reason that God wanted them to have to come out every day was one, every day he wanted them to depend upon him to satisfy their hunger. Loved ones, listen, listen, coming to church for an hour or two a week is not enough to satisfy your spiritual hunger the rest of this week. Now listen, we come here and we encourage one another. This is supposed to be like a banquet. This is supposed to be like a big family meal where we come together. But listen, I'm assuming that the day after church, you won't just have Sunday lunch and then not eat the rest of the week. Now I'm not talking about maybe you're gonna fast or something the rest of the week. Well, that's a different story right there. You're doing that so you actually learn that Jesus is the one who really ultimately satisfies you. But I doubt many of you in here are only gonna eat once a week. Well, loved ones, I want you to know, every single day, you and I can know Jesus can satisfy the hunger of our souls as only he can. You see, Jesus satisfies me personally. He's not a program. It's, 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 he, it's not just about a religion. 
It's about a relationship with Jesus. It's, it's, it's really like these folks that he's talking to. It was like they weren't getting it. And finally, Jesus is like, let me make it for you as simple as I can. Where maybe, maybe probably, even the, probably even the boys and girls got it before the moms and dads did. Look at verse 35. Just, just read this aloud with me. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes, everybody say believes, believes in me shall never thirst. It's him who satisfies me. He satisfies me personally, and he satisfies me eternally. You eat a great meal, you're going to be hungry again. You have a vacation, you're going to eventually want another one. You make money, you're going to need more money. You, you, you go home, you have Sunday dinner, you're going to be hungry tomorrow. You get, maybe you got some nice clothes for Christmas. Well, eventually, guess what? You're going to need some more clothes later. The prophet Isaiah said this in Isaiah 55, verse two, why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, the prophet said, and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Hear me, the Lord says, that your soul may live. And the reality is, is sometimes we all end up singing that same song that Mick Jagger sang with the Rolling Stones. I can't get no satisfaction. Because we find that the things of this world, man, they just don't satisfy. Henry Ford, wealthy, amazing business industrialist. He said this, I was happier when doing a mechanic's job. Andrew Carnegie, millions he, said, he had millions upon millions. He said this, millionaires seldom smile. Someone said money will buy a bed but not sleep, books but not brains, food but not an appetite, a house but not a home, amusements but not happiness. The pastor, Adrian Rogers, he said this, there's a time when the things of this world are not enough. There comes a time when we are fed up with the things of this world and need far more than just bread and fish. That's what Jesus is trying to teach these folks. You're gonna need a lot more in life than just bread and fish. Now I look around this crowd this morning, probably watching on television or online. I think about the people whose houses I drove by this morning. I think about coming out of my neighborhood. Most of us got plenty of bread and fish. I was talking in a small group on Thursday night. We were looking at, the, uh, at Matthew chapter seven where Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. And I, and, and I shared with our small group, I said, listen, this is, this, is, this is tough. This is tough, particularly for many American Christians. It's hard for us to get to the point where we really feel like we've got to ask, seek, and knock. Why? Because that persistency really just doesn't seem that necessary in my life when I've got a refrigerator full of food, cabinets full of stuff, a couple cars in the driveway, a nice home, and a job, and a family that's healthy. But then a little bit, what maybe it was a little bit later that night or maybe even the next morning, we get a text message from some dear friends of ours sharing with us, praying for their precious little grandbaby who had been rushed to the hospital. And in that moment, all of a sudden, how much food you got in the refrigerator, how many cars you got in the driveway, how nice a house you got, it doesn't really particularly matter but so much, does it? Jesus looks at these folks, he says, listen, I want you to know I'm the one who truly satisfies your hunger. But here's the second thing you just gotta note. Jesus truly satisfies the hunger of my soul at his great personal cost. It is great personal cost. Look, look with me. This, is, this chapter's got a lot in it. Verse 41 of chapter six, the Bible says, so the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. They knew what he was saying. He was saying, listen, I'm God. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, who father and mother we know? How does he now say, I've come down from heaven? Chad, that was kind of what he was reinforcing there, what you were talking about earlier. They were like, how can he say that? Verse 43, Jesus answered them, don't grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. 
This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he'll live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. He right there is already pointing to the cross, loved ones. Right there, he's already pointing to what's gonna be written at the end of the Gospel of John. Right there, he's already reminding them, listen, I am going to pay the price for your satisfaction. And we ought never to forget it. We ought never to forget Jesus truly satisfies the hunger of my soul as only he can, and he did it at his great personal cost. Jesus gave and surrendered his life. He took on flesh, and that means this. He experienced every single amount of pain that Roman cross could inflict upon another human being. The life and satisfaction that Jesus offers, oh yes, we sing about his amazing grace, that free grace, but don't you ever think it didn't cost him so very much his great personal cost. John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this than he laid down his life for his friends. Ephesians 5, 2, Christ loved, loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Titus 2, 14, God himself gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness, to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. And 1 John 3, 16, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us as we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Jesus, Jesus Christ, man, it cost. God's children were costly to Jesus and Jesus gave himself for the life of the people of this world. Keep in mind the sacrifice of Jesus. You know, that's, that, that, that's, a, that's one of the big, big differences between Christianity and the other religions of this world, that God became a man, Jesus, and sacrificed himself for a sinner such as I. It was great personal cost. I did a little bit of research. This is a Washington Post article. From the day a baby is born until they turn 18. Chad and Emily, listen to this, and I, I, hope, this don't, I, hope, I hope this prepares Matt and Jordan, because I know they're expecting. From the day they're born until the day they turn 18, it's gonna cost your family at least $310,000 to raise them, all right? That's about $17,000 a year, according to the Brookings Institution analysis of data from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And by the way, that probably means, even that's probably the cost if they're a light eater, okay? If they're a light eater. And they don't even, and that doesn't count college, by the way. We're not even going there, all right? Loved ones, I want you to listen. Listen, some of your parents, but, but, you, know, but you know what you would say? Oh, oh, but it's so worth it. Listen, loved ones. My point to you is this, is I want you to get today. Jesus is the only one who can satisfy you. No one can satisfy you like Jesus. And then secondly, you just know, listen, listen, he spared no expense. He spared no, he took on all the cost to make it possible for you to have satisfaction. Then the last little thing I want you to see is this. This is where it kind of drives the point home. Jesus truly satisfies the hunger of my soul. And here's what it comes down to. When I receive him, when I receive him, when I receive him. Verse, verse 52 and 59, the Bible tells us, but the, Jew, the Jews then disputed among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now this, this, this confused the daylights out of them and it still confuses some people to this day. It even confused the folks in the first century. That's why some of the Christians were accused of being cannibals because they would hear, they would hear Christians doing the Lord's Supper and communion and they would go, they're eating his body and they're drinking his blood. No, 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 listen, listen, this is, this is figurative right here. He's given them an image. He's, he's giving them a metaphor. I want, I want to explain that to you. Listen, listen, listen. Just like they had eaten Physically, they had actually eaten that, that, that bread and the fish the day before. They had to receive it. They had to take it into their body. They had to, they had to actually receive it. That's the picture here. 
You see, the picture is when you come to Jesus, you've got to receive him and take him into your life. Listen, we must receive the bread of life to live, just like they, they had to receive, you got to receive real bread to live physically. You have to receive the bread of life to live spiritually. And listen, you can't eat halfway. You can't eat halfway. Chewing up food, and if you just spit it out, that's not eating. That's not going to do you any good. I know it's kind of a crude illustration, but I trust you'll get the point. Listen, you either eat or you don't. Amen? You get that? The same is true believing in Jesus. You just can't chew on Jesus, all right? You got to receive him in your life. You just can't dabble in Jesus. You can't say, just, I'm just, I'm just going to kind of, I just know about Jesus. Listen, you can read the back of a food box, you can read the ingredients, you can memorize a recipe, but it's not going to satisfy your hunger, amen? You've gotta receive the food into your life. You gotta receive the bread of life into your life. That's the picture here. It can't just be intellectual, it's gotta be experiential. You just can't think about food, you gotta take food in. Thinking about eating is not the same as actually eating. Thinking about Jesus isn't the same as believing in Jesus and trusting him. You see, to eat something, you gotta receive it. And this isn't force feeding. You can't force feed when it comes to eternal life. You gotta willingly receive it. You see, your relationship with Jesus, understand this, it's not just a one-time event but an ongoing experience. I'm gonna give it to you in two pieces. This is really what I want you to get, so tune in here, right? Just, just listen real close to this. Verse 53, so Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. That word eating there in the Greek language is from the word that meant a single one-time event. So listen, becoming a Christian is a one-time event. You put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, surrender to the throne of your life to him, that's a one-time event. Have you done that? Have you confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior? That's the word eat there, a one-time event. But then you go on in verse 54, it says here, it changes the word in the English Standard Version to the word feeds. It's because in the Greek language, it was a different word. Verse 54, whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. That word feeds is from the Greek word that meant this. It means this, to have the continual habit of eating. It's the idea of constant communion with Christ. Understand this, listen, becoming a Christian is a one-time event. Growing as a Christian is an ongoing experience. Don't miss that. You see, loved ones, listen, we need a new, we need fresh experience in living in Christ day in and day out. Jesus taught us to pray, give us our daily bread. So have you received him into your life? You're watching online or on TV right now and you wanna know more about receiving Christ, I wanna ask you to email us at info at groveav.com. For the rest of you in this room right here, you wanna know more about establishing a relationship with Jesus Christ, receiving him as your Lord and Savior? Well, right after service, we'll have opportunity for you. And for all of us listening online or TV or here in person, understand this, know this, that once you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's not, that's not, that's not the end of it. It's meant to be an ongoing experience of walking with Christ and letting him satisfy you day in and day out. And that's why he gives us his word to feast upon. That's why he puts his spirit right inside of our lives to lead and guide us. When we come and worship him, that's him satisfying us. When you serve him with your gifts and abilities that he's blessed you with, that's him satisfying you because understand this, listen, listen, the, the stuff of this world, the bread of this world may, may seem to satisfy you for a moment, but I tell you what it often ends up doing, it just ends to emptiness, that's what it does. It just ends to emptiness. So loved ones, listen. I wanna pray for us that we would each and every one understand that Jesus came so that he could satisfy our deepest hunger and he could satisfy our souls. Let's pray together. Father, I pray right now that we would know and indeed trust that you are the one who can satisfy us. You are the bread of life. And Lord Jesus, I pray over these next few weeks as we study your word that we'll get to know you better and better. 
For some in this room, maybe right now, Lord Jesus, they just, they need to just receive you as Lord. I pray they do so. For others of us, we, Lord, need to, we need to enjoy you day in and day out. We need to experience you. We need to be growing in you, Lord Jesus, each and every day. So, Lord, I just pray, even as we sing this song, that you will minister to our souls. Some of us, we maybe just need to come and kneel in prayer and and just bring to you our burdens and our worries. Maybe as we stand and sing along with the praise team this song, we'll just want to marvel at who you are and, and let the words of the scripture today and the words of the songs we've been able to share in to remind us that, Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. You are the one who satisfies us. And I pray, Lord, that we wouldn't come to the breakfast table or the dinner table only on Sunday morning. That we would know that we can, we can seek you and that you will satisfy us throughout the rest of this week. Lord Jesus, thank you for this opportunity that we've had today to, to be reminded that you're the one that satisfies us. And Lord, perhaps, perhaps in this room, there are some of us that know people who need us to be like an Andrew who helps to bring spiritual food to hungry people. So maybe right now in this room, you can just think of one name of one person that you know needs to know Jesus can satisfy their soul. Well, could it be that Jesus is the one who has prepared you to offer them the bread of life? Maybe you're in this room right now and you can think of that person by name. Would you, just, would you just maybe whisper that name out loud? It just popped in your head right now. It might be your brother, might be your sister, might be your spouse, might be a neighbor, coworker, classmate. You might even during this song, if you wanna come here and kneel here and just pray for that person by name, I invite you to do so. Maybe it's God making you aware of how how he might want to use you to serve in some way in this church. I know, Lord, we have opportunities and we see more opportunities being made known to us of how we can serve you. I pray, Lord, as the church, we'll just lean into that as the body of Christ. It might be working with kids on Sunday morning. It might be helping us to, to, to start up a, a, a more kids ministries during the week. It might just be getting involved in a small group where we can break open the scriptures and sit there kind of at a family table with each other and just be reminded and remind others of how you satisfy us. Lord Jesus, I'm just trusting your hand to be at work within our church family in a way that only you can. Because Lord Jesus, I, 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 don't, I don't deserve to get to, to, to preach here. I, don't, I, don't, um, I know there have been more eloquent preachers in, who've preached here. I know there are others perhaps out there. But Lord Jesus, e even then, I'm just reminded that, that all of us, each and every man, one boy and girl here, myself included, we, you call us to point people to you, Lord Jesus. So I just pray that that's what we're doing. And I'm just thankful that, that your love and your mercy and your grace and your truth is so satisfying. Lord Jesus, I know there's a lot of times I, I snack on the stuff of this world. I, I sometimes take in junk food, and it, it doesn't really do me any good long term. Lord Jesus, I know you really are the only one who satisfies. Help me to be a husband and a father. Help me to be a, a neighbor. Help me to be a man that will keep that in mind these next days ahead this week. May we worship you now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand together. You may want to come and kneel and pray for that. You may want to come and kneel and pray for that friend that you know. Let's seek his face. There you go, buddy.
Thank you, guys. And listen, uh, don't let that dollar figure about the kid cost fret y'all too much. I, you, you, you'll be good. I got, I got a million-dollar picture down there. My three kids are on my home screen on my phone. I show it to you. The million-dollar picture. It just occurred to me, wow. But anyway, man, but, but those are parents. Encourage the other parents. It's worth every penny. Amen? Amen? All right. It, it, well, that's kind of weak, right? Like some of y'all are having a tough day, but that's all right. I know Sunday's a tough day to get the kids ready for church. That's okay. I should have left that alone. Talking about kids, baby dedication is a good thing for me to talk about. Um, we're going to have parent-child dedication March 3rd, so save the date for that. Save the date for that March 3rd. Uh, we're working on, I think, a registration link, but right now, if you have questions or interests, some have already contacted us. You can just, just email us at info at grovab.com. We'll kind of work to get you on the list. Um, hey, just a few other things. By the way, in your This Week at Grove, don't miss, uh, Jordan has on there a list of uh, small groups, Bible study groups for you. Um, there, take note of that. Um, be praying for our Bible study groups. Uh, be looking at one that you could plug into, or if you're already in one, maybe find one that you might can invite some friends to, classmates, coworkers, neighbors, you name it. Good opportunities there. I just want to give a word of thanks for those who are helping lead the way out in our men's ministries and in our women's ministries. Let's just keep praying for what God is doing there. Also, man, thanks again to those who work with preschool. Um, I, I look at that clock when it goes red. I'm like, man, just thank you for those folks back there working with our preschool and our elementary age kids. If you're interested in serving with children, uh, contact our office, let us know. Um, and and really, by default, if you, if you don't know where to turn, just email info at groveav.com, and then that'll get steered to wherever. But just thankful for what uh, Rebecca and Robin are, are doing there with, with that, with those ministries. And um, a lot of opportunities there, especially as we move into the new year, a lot of opportunities for expansion there, we believe. Also, man, just thank you to our deacons on deck and uh, appreciate you, brothers. Daryl, I'm gonna ask you to come and just uh, close us out in prayer today, if you would. He's our deacon on deck. Um, it's a uh, ministry that we're leaning into as our deacons are really just helping so much with pastoral care and follow up with folks. Um, I'd like us to say our verse together, all right? Ephesians 3, 20, 21, it's on the screen for us because God is able, let's say it together. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we think or ask, ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever, amen. God bless you. Brother Daryl, send us out in prayer. What a great message today. Father, thank you for being our bread that sustains us. Thank you for being the eternal solution to our dilemma. Help us to encourage others this week who don't know you, Father, to come to the saving knowledge, to partake of that bread of life that's given so freely for you. Father, we just ask that you would be with us now as we go to our homes. Keep us safe. Bring us back to the next appointed time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.